Warning. Due to the short length of this game, I will not be showing any of my own recorded footage and will instead have the trailer playing in the background. Because of this, if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever, I would advise you not watch the trailers because it has a lot of key gameplay in it. This game also contains some bad language. Of all the random games that I end up purchasing from the eShop, The Great perhaps is the most interesting one to date. This video will be in two parts. The first part is my spoiler free review, which isn't long. And the second part is my spoiler filled review, which is my rundown through the game, basically saying everything that happens in the game pretty much. It is fair to warn you that these are my opinions on the game and you don't have to take them to your own heart. You I'd highly advise you play the game yourself and choose how you feel. The Great Perhaps is a 2D puzzle slash horror game, meaning that there are both puzzle elements and horror elements. You play as an astronaut with a lantern that allows you to move between the present and past and it's that's basically it. That, that is the closest I can get to a spoiler free review. As for the game, it's it's interesting. It's definitely got a lot of puzzle aspects to it. But I can't really say much more without spoiling key things in the game. <laughs> yeah, I suck at this. Uh, but if you want to or well, if you like 2D puzzle games with a little bit of horror, not jump scare horror, but like, I guess more psychological horror, um, I highly recommend this game because it is very interesting. If you are watching right now and not just listening in, you can see how everything is right now because it's showing two different sides to things. The past and present. Um, before I move on to the spoiler field review, I suggest you try out this game first. This is the end of the short spoiler free review. Be warned, the more of this video that you watch, the more of the story will be revealed. You have been warned. And this, <coughs> this is your final warning. The Great Perhaps is a short story, but at the same time, that's the, but at the same time, a long one. If you're still here, it means that you don't care about spoilers. So, in this game, you play as an astronaut that has been in space hibernation for 100 years. Right before the astronaut went to sleep, something happened down on Earth, and your crew went to go check it out. Meanwhile, you went to sleep and were woken up 100 years later. When you wake up. You go down to return to Earth to try to see what's up. And the world is in ruins. Before you leave the space shuttle, you attach the space shuttle's AI to your suit. And this will be like your guide throughout the game. Sort of. The AI in your suit tells you that there's one human life form nearby. You follow the path till you are in a ruined building and find a strange lantern. All of a sudden, a tall dark figure appears and starts to chase you until you use the lantern to temporarily escape to the past. This section serves as a uh, this section serves as a tutorial, teaching the player how to use the character's move set. To me, it felt natural, and due to the 2D playstyle, I couldn't get lost. I couldn't like go like, oh, what's over there in the distance? No, I could only go left and right, following the path. The dialogue between the character and the AI has this way of making me feel like I'm not alone on this destroyed Earth. So it's a great dynamic between the two, and slowly the AI gets a little bit more... less robotic, if you know what I mean. So... After finding the lantern that allows you to go back to the past, our character wants to go home so he can see his wife and kid, who, to him, when he first woke up, thinking they were dead, got him depressed, 
So with this little bit of hope, he wants to continue move forward and try to go home so we can go back to the past and see his wife and kid. So for the next chunk of the game, you'll be heading home. On your way there, you'll travel between the past and present to progress. Sometimes some things no longer exist or do not exist yet, and you have to use the time travel to get past certain barriers. Basically, your solution to most problems is time travel in the beginning. To me personally, going back and forth was not too tedious. It felt more like something I would realistically have to do in the scenario if it were real life. And yeah, it just made me feel good. It didn't feel like I was ever going, like having to go back and forth for me. But then again, I'm a patient person for the most part. Although there was times where the lantern doesn't let you stay in the past forever. So... I would sometimes clip and go into like a space where it'd be like a barrier. And if you go into a barrier or a hole, you die when you go back to the past, not present. Um, along the way, I came across a few puzzles here and there where I would have to go back and forth between the past, bringing objects to the other time zones in order to open up certain spots. Um, spoiler, you also get to stop a few things from happening in the past, such as a suicide and a bank robbery. Eventually, you'll make your way to the apartment building that the character calls home, and then the lantern stops working. And then, the dark figure returns in a chase sequence that uses previous puzzle elements to progress through the apartment to get to your room. When you get to the room, your lantern works again. Only to reveal that you were much earlier in time than you would think. When I got to the room, I met myself as a boy. Now earlier in the game, the AI asks you what influences your character to become an astronaut, and it's that you as a boy saw an astronaut and that inspired you. Well, as it turns out, you were the astronaut that inspired yourself. This reveal of what past we've been going to shows how bad off the world was. To a child's eyes, we may not see that as good. And I think this brings like a good eye-opener to our current world a lot of things we turn the blind eye to and I think this whether it was intentional or not is sort of a message to pay more attention to what we're doing now as it might affect the future later um, but continuing on with the review now knowing that we probably wouldn't be able to see our family the new mission was to deliver the seismic readings of the event that our crew went down to in, investigate to the past humanity so that they can be prepared for all the um, things that happen. So in, in this final chunk of the game, we are trying to save humanity, but we're introduced to a new mechanic known as anomalies, places where the past and present collide. We arrive at a military base in which we are introduced to this, where some soldiers from the past are seen in the present. They're a little glitchy. They could, And these soldiers will shoot to kill. So you have to find some way to move them in the past so they no longer are there in the present. Uh, it was weird, but it does fit with the fact that, well, the lantern has a top limit to it, meaning that it's unstable, which could cause side effects, which most likely, well, it makes sense. Eventually, we get inside the base, and we find the creator of both the lantern and your AI, and we find a giant like power source that seems to be what the lantern's running off of. And it seems to be like causing anomaly waves where there will be waves where the, you can see the past and the past can see you while you're in the present. 
Uh, it was a little annoying because the puzzle for this section was uh, another like generator wire section where we needed some uh, pieces so the wires would work. And every single time the wave came through, it would stop you from being able to see what you're doing and it would reset the puzzle, uh, which was very annoying because sometimes the puzzle wouldn't like turn. I think it was probably from my own controllers because my Joy-Cons have drift. Oh, and I'm playing the um, Switch version of this, I should probably have said at the beginning. I'm not sure if there were any, if there was a computer version of it or not. <clears throat> Uh, like I said, you say you solve that generator puzzle, and then you go to hand the documents to the person. But right before you hand the documents over, the lantern stops working again, and the dark figure returns, but trying to steal the lantern from you, grabbing it, causing it to malfunction. And then something really messed up happens. It sends you to the moment where the event that that your crew went down to investigate happened, and it sends you to the moment. Your wife and kid die. However, you don't die. You hear your character saying he will keep trying as long as he has this great perhaps. And the game ends with the dark figure waving at your pod coming to Earth from the beginning of the game when you were coming back down from the space shuttle to investigate. Now, closing words. From the moment I realized the kid in the, my apartment was me, I had this feeling that I wouldn't be able to change the past. Because everything I was doing had already been done. I was just going through the motions. The um, suicide, he said that he had like these scripts, not scripts, he had like this draft of a book, and we had to bring him his book. And that's something that probably should have tipped me off, is that if he had committed suicide, it's very likely that his story would not have been published by him. And the fact that our character said it was published by him kind of points to the detail that he didn't commit suicide, meaning someone stopped him. We stopped him already. Uh, so, oh, and us going... And seeing ourselves and being the inspiration of ourselves seems to indicate a loop. While the ending is not completely clear, I interpret it as our character became the dark figure. Continuing to try to change the past even if it meant destroying his past self. Like I said, he's basically stuck in a loop trying to fix the unfixable, unable to move on. Constantly causing his past version of himself to become his present self. Destroying himself in the process, but causing an entire loop. Overall, this was a good story. Um, I still, even if you stuck around this far and are now spoiled to a bunch of things, it still is something to experience. Um, Gameplay-wise, I wish there was a hint system, because at times I felt stuck and missed the obvious, because I was focused on some other puzzle aspect at the time thinking it was one way than another. So the AI eventually like giving the tiny hints if you take too long on a puzzle. Not enough hints to be like, hey, this is how you do it, but like hinting at something would would be nice. But it's, it's still fine. I got through it all. Otherwise than that, I like the game and I would and I would highly recommend you play it and experience it on your own. Um, I don't know how many more game reviews I'll do like this because this game was a short game which is why I didn't have my own gameplay in the background um, and I just had the trailer in the background and I I know this video probably was a boring one it's felt more like a story time than anything but uh, I'll try to make the next few game reviews uh, be like the previous ones where I play the game in the background while I review it. Uh, till next time, I hope you guys enjoy this review slash summary of the game. And I'll see you in the next video. CDB Zoom. Out.